Okay guys, so we're going to talk about medication forms in part two here. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I'm going to kind of fly through this with you guys. You're not going to see too much of this on your actual pharmacology exam, but there's some good information on here that you guys might see on the National Registry. Um, so the form of a medication is usually based on the manufacturer of that medication. The form usually dictates the route of how that medication is going to be given, such as if it's a pill, we might need to swallow it. If it's a liquid, we might need to inject it, so on and so forth. If it's a transdermal patch, we need to place it on our skin, blah, blah, blah. Really what it's trying to do is, is the manufacturers are either trying to hit a, a specific organ or probably body system, depending on the medicine, or um, they're trying to dictate the timing of release on how quickly that medication is absorbed in the body and it enters into our uh, into our bloodstream. Um, usually, again, when you guys were talking about the routes of administration, your PO uh, was the slowest route that usually takes about 30 to 60 minutes to kick in, where that inhalation, right, which is technically a liquid that we create, create into a mist, which we'll talk about when we get to certain drugs. Um, it just depends on how fast that manufacturer actually wants that to work on the actual body system that that medication happens to be targeting. Okay, so some of the basic forms of medications that you guys will see out there. Um, tablets and capsules, uh, solutions and suspensions, we really don't do too much um, in EMS. That's more of a some of our nursing friends kind of thing, but just know that they're out there. Um, I'm not going to get too much into solutions and suspensions because you guys will technically really never see it um, as far as med administration for EMS. Um, meter dose inhalers, um, we're going to talk about those for sure. Topical medications, transcutaneous medications, gels, um, and gases for um, inhalation. So we do have injectables in the... Um, EMT basic scope of practice uh, out here in the state of New Mexico. Um, these are, we'll get into those as we go through the actual specific drugs that we're going to be lecturing on in your scope. Um, this is usually an uh, intramuscular or uh, a subcutaneous injection, an IM or sub-Q injection. Um, it is very quickly absorbed, usually anywhere between three to five minutes. Some literature says five to ten minutes. Um, it also also depends on the medication um, and where you actually inject it into the body. But really, if it's an intramuscular injection, um, I usually go with the three to five minutes. If it's a subcutaneous, I usually go with the five to ten minutes. Uh, intranasal. Intranasal is um, fairly new to EMS um, and new to our system as well. Uh, there are not too many drugs in your scope that you guys can do in uh, intranasal that will change as you guys move up in level of licensure. Um, intranasal is given by what's called a mucosal atomizing device, what we call the MAD device. The MAD device is actually the white tip that you guys see on that syringe. Um, it, it attaches to the syringe. It screws right onto the actual syringe part as well. Um, there is an adapter, right? That's what they call it. It's an adapter to the syringe. Um, what we do is we will actually pull that medication out of a vial using the actual needle part of the syringe. Once we get the medication that we want, we'll take the needle off. We'll dispose the needle on a sharp shuttle. We'll attach the intranasal or MAD device, the mucosal atomizing device. Um, and we squirt the medication up the patient's nose, uh, right into their nostrils. Um, the MAD device, you can do, um, each NAR can take uh, one milligram or one milliliter, I'm sorry, one milliliter um, at a time. Um, the one medication that you guys are going to be doing with this is called Narcan. Uh, trust me, you guys will become very familiar with Narcan out here in the state of New Mexico. Um, we're going to talk about Narcan in a minute, but Narcan is uh, the reversal that we use for uh, people that have overdosed on opiates, such as heroin or some of the um, other uh, fentanyls, right? Um, the Some of the, the prescription medications, the oxycodones, the Percocet, stuff like that. Um, your patient can be unconscious with this, which is actually really nice. Um, you can actually just squirt that up the nose, and it's actually absorbed in the in the mucosa of the um, of the pharynx, the nasal pharynx, or the uh, the um, 
um, oropharynx, depending on how far you can get that spray to actually go back. What it does is when you push that syringe, it creates a mist. It actually atomizes um, the medication. You guys will be able to get your hands on this during class, um, during our lab, so that you guys can practice actually administering this before you guys uh, get out into the streets. Okay, uh, moving on to inhaled. This is in your scope of practice. Um, it, just as it sounds, right? This medication is inhaled into the lungs. This is the fastest route that you guys have in your scope of practice. This is pretty close to instantaneous, guys. These medications work really good, um, really quick. It goes straight down into the uh, lung tissue, and it's absorbed through the lungs, which are uh, very um, vascular. It's very easy to get these uh, medications into the bloodstream. Um, it's really simple to use. Um, we're going to show you guys how to hook up the nebulizer, um, both the handheld into just a regular mask, an oxygen mask. Um, you guys can see um, in the on the upper part, um, that is your albuterol. Um, we're going to talk about albuterol here in a minute. We use that for asthmatics and people that might be in anaphylaxis, basically anybody that has any kind of wheezing that's going on in their lungs. There are some caveats to that, obviously, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, but you can see the actual little medications, those like little kind of uh, gray uh, tubes with like the little T-tops on them. Those are called bullets. Um, the medications for uh, albuterol are pre-filled for you. Each one of those bullets is two and a half milligrams. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, in the right with a little thing that the guy's holding with the gloved hand, that's called a uh, uh, an MDI. M as in Mary, um, it's a multi-dose inhaler or a metered dose inhaler. Um, if you guys are asthmatics, you guys are very familiar with these. If you guys have kids that are asthmatics, you guys are very familiar with these. Or really, if you guys have been in high school and had buddies that have seen them take a puff off this thing or whatever, I mean, they're very well known. Um, be careful, not all metered dose inhalers are um, for what we use them for, um, but that is something that usually is prescribed to the patient. Um, and that is something as a, as a maintenance drug um, for them to be able to control um, any kinds of signs and symptoms that they may have of shortness of breath or wheezing based on their uh, disease pathology. And then, of course, uh, next to that, you guys see the uh, oxygen tank, um, the little kind of uh, tube on the right. Um, that's for uh, medical gas. Um, it's a... Um, it's a mask that's that black and, I think it's yellow, black and yellow mask on the right of the tank as you're looking at it there. We use that for medical gas. Um, we actually don't use medical gas here in the state of New Mexico. It is a special skill. Uh, some of our pl flight paramedics do use medical gas and our hospitals do as well. And then, of course, on the left, you see that little kind of green mask with the little baggie. That's called a non-rebreather mask. We're going to talk about that later on in lab as well, get you guys uh, get your hands on them so that you guys can uh, play with all this stuff. Okay, moving on to oral medications. It's also known as per os. We label it PO um, on medication charts or um, in our actual patient care chart. Um, the thing with this is your patient must be awake, and not only do they need to be awake, but they must be able to swallow. Um, this is actually... Um, most of our, the, the oral medication that you guys are going to use, um, specifically like an aspirin, you guys are going to ask that, ask that patient to chew that before they swallow it. Um, but the patient must be awake. They must be able to maintain their own airway. They must be able to um, follow simple commands. And the only way to truly guarantee that a patient is able to control their own airway is if that patient is able to swallow. We're going to talk about that a little bit more when we get into our respiratory lectures um, this semester. Um, it's very slow. This is the slowest route that you guys have um, oral medications. Um, it usually takes effect in anywhere between 30 and 60 minutes, depending on the patient um, that's taking it. Uh, the blood does enter through the digestive system, so it takes a little bit to go down all the way to, um, to the stomach. It has to get broken up down there, and then it enters the bloodstream through there. So it does take a little bit for this medication to kick in. And we'll talk about the specific forms that you guys have of oral medications in your scope when we get to those drugs. Okay, um, sublingual. Um, this is a medication that actually goes 
it's it's a pill or possibly even a spray um, but either way it is placed underneath the tongue um, it actually it enters the bloodstream through the mucosal lining of the mouth um, it's pretty quick it's not um, as fast as like an injectable but it's definitely not as slow as an oral route of medication um, again this patient must be awake okay um, they must be able to um, follow um, commands all right um, it works usually generally generally within a couple minutes but um, usually about five right around five to ten um, right right around five to ten minutes when you guys are gonna actually start seeing the effect of this um, both pictures that are there is a medication called nitroglycerin um, we use nitroglycerin for our cardiac patients um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get there you guys um, this is probably um, one of the most involved medications that you guys can give um, as an EMT basic here in the state of New Mexico and we're really going to spend some time when we get to nitroglycerin because um, you can kill somebody real quick with this drug um, so you guys do have some pretty hard hidden drugs in the state of New Mexico and you guys do need to study up for this test um, so that you guys know when and when not to give these drugs the uh, the actual bottle that you guys see there with the white cap that's the pill bottle um, that pill bottle is, uh, they're, they're really, really small pills. Um, they are placed underneath the tongue, and it's actually dissolved um, underneath the tongue, and it enters the bloodstream that way. Those two little red bottles on the bottom there, they are uh, a spray, a nitroglycerin spray, and you just have the patient lift up their tongue. Boom, you give them a spray, um, and that's how it goes in sublingually. Most of our services here in town have switched to the spray. Um, there are a couple of services that still carry both, actually. Um, still carries the pills um, and still carry the, sp uh, the spray. Why? I don't know. Um, I'm not quite sure why that is. I, I always get that question, why do ambulances carry two different styles? Not sure. Can't answer it, right? Um, I, I just work there. You know what I mean? So um, as long as I have that medication, I could care less why um, they have uh, both the pill and the spray. Um, so that's nitro. We will get back to nitro here in a little bit once we get into the actual um, drugs that we're going to be talking about throughout this course. Okay, moving on to buccal. Um, buccal, you guys uh, have one drug that is actually a buccal administration. This is where you guys get confused. That drug that we give is called oral glucose. Um, so it's not technically an oral medication. It is supposed to be a buccal medication. Um, buccal means it goes in between the cheek and the gum line. It's kind of like if you guys uh, chew tobacco, right? Your Copenhagen, your your Kodiak, right? Your Skull, whatever you guys, whatever your flavor is. Um, we place it there. This is used for um, our diabetic patients with uh, low blood sugars in order to get their blood sugars back up. We'll talk about that more when we talk about the endocrine uh, emergencies. Um, you guys will see this in class. You guys will be practicing all these forms. Like I said, we'll talk more about oral glucose here in a sec. Okay, um, topical forms of medication. You guys have no topical forms of medication in your scope. Um, lotions, creams, ointments, they're usually applied to the surface of skin. This is like your icy height, your trauma, uh, icy hot, your trauma, um, some calamine lotion, hydrocortisone cream, neospore, and stuff like that. Um, we do need you guys to know what the topical form, the definition of a topical form of the medication is, um, but that's basically it, and that's all I'm going to say about this. Transdermal is another form of medication. This is designed to be uh, absorbed through the skin, kind of like a topical medication, but usually these medications are or can be um, pretty heavy hitters, and this is why I want to talk to you guys about this, okay? We do not have any transdermal medications um, in EMS. Um, at least here in New Mexico, we don't. Um, many of these medications that are uh, prescribed to our patients as a transdermal medication can have some very serious systemic effects on our patient. Um, we see a lot of pain uh, patches such as like a fentanyl patch or a morphine patch right 
um, dilated patches, right? And the other big one is nitroglycerin. So let's talk about this for a sec, okay? I'm going to be preaching to you guys from day one that you guys will always have a pair of gloves on you, okay? You guys will wear gloves when you guys touch each other. You guys will wear gloves throughout all of lab so that you guys can get used to wearing latex gloves. I'm sorry, or at least medical grade gloves, right? You guys are going to learn how to cut tape with those gloves. You guys are going to learn how to do your patient assessment with those gloves, okay? Um, we're going to be wearing gloves. And the reason for that is, is that you don't want to get the cooties that these patients have. The big one is, is some of these transdermal patches, okay? <clears throat> Specifically nitroglycerin, I'm going to talk about that. Nitroglycerin is actually a paste, all right? So it's not even a patch, okay? It's usually a paste. And some of our patients... Um, specifically in the hospitals, they'll put a paste usually up there on their shoulder. And it's a steady kind of flow of nitroglycerin into our patient. Well, I'm going to tell you what. You guys as healthy adults, okay, if you guys are not wearing gloves, okay, and you guys happen to touch that nitroglycerin patch, and then let's say, right, you guys rub your eyes, right, I think somebody said we, we touch our eyes like 10,000 times a day and don't even know it or something like that. Some ridiculous number, okay? Well, that nitroglycerin gets into your system and you could very well pass out, okay? Hit the ground. Boom, all right? Done. Your blood pressure is going to drop. You can have this very severe headache and you could pass out, all right? Um, pain pills, uh, pain patches, okay? Your fentanyl patches, okay? If you guys touch that fentanyl patch um, without the glove, you guys will start feeling the effects of that fentanyl. All right? So be very careful when you're touching patients. Usually these, these medications are, uh, um, these patches are usually found on the shoulders, either the front or back of the shoulders, okay, the anterior or posterior view of the back. Um, lower backs, it could be on the hips. All right, we got to be careful about medication patches and always, always, always just wear a glove, guys. Just wear gloves, okay? Um, you don't want to get the cooties of your patient. You definitely don't want to be getting um, nitroglycerin or fentanyl on your system and pass out on scene. You don't want to become a patient. We already have one. Let's not get another one, okay? Okay, so this is a great slide, right? It's simple. It's easy to follow to show the speeds of administration, okay? Make sure you guys know the speeds of administration of your drugs, all right? Um, that way you guys, when you are doing patient care and you are out in the streets, you guys will have some idea on how long it might take that sublingual medication of nitroglycerin to have the effects on your cardiac patient, right? Or how long that inhaled medication for somebody with shortness of breath or wheezing, such as one of our asthmatic patients, how long it's actually going to sit there and take effect, Okay. Um, so great little slide. Please make sure you guys know this slide for the pharmacology exam. This is going to be it for part two. We're going to jump into part three here in a sec. Thanks guys.